mua te tuhi, ki hai tai ki ngā pukenga, ki ngā wānanga, ki ngā tauira, pātua kuru, pātua whao, pātua te toki a tai haruru, pēke ake hoke au ki runga nei, ki te whare huka huko nui e no tangaroa, ko tangaroa i pati ai e nuku tai maloro, nuku tai maloro kaore ko au ko hine tu a hoanga, e kimi ana e hau ana i te whānau a rāta. Ko rāta i mate ana i te awai piko piko i piti, ma te mau ngā rongo, whāno, whāno, hara mai te toki haumi e, hui e, tai ki e. Hei ngā mate, kei runga i a tātou i tēnei rā, i tēnei wā, nau mai haere atu. Ko te kōrero mo koutou, haere e hoki. Ko te kōrero mo tātou, tēnā tātou, tēnā tātou, tēnā tātou katoa. Nau mai haere mai, ki tēnei hui a tātou, ki te whiri whiri, ki te kōrero i ngā take kai roto i ngā puka puka nei. Nā reira, kā rehe tōro ahi a ngā kōrero, e ngā rei, me mehi, me mehi kā teka. Nā reira, apiti hono tātai hono, ko rātau te hunga mate ki a rātau, apiti hono tātai hono, te hunga mate ki a, te hunga aura ki a tātau, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, ki a ora tātau katoa. Kai rāru. Kia ora nga tātou, I would just like to welcome all our whānau here tonight as we basically kick this uh, off uh, the round of, I guess, information, hui about what the final uh, representation and asset arrangement model is in terms of the Tātou Tātou Te Wāro Trust going forward for the foreseeable future. So I just uh, firstly like to acknowledge Richard and the Mihi and I kanaki and opening our welcome. Also acknowledgement to our um, Apakeki, our Kui, our Kaumata here tonight, um, as well as all those other members of our Iwi and Hapu who have turned out to, to have a listen have a, and, and hear what uh, the, the model of the presentation is and, and hopefully ask some questions uh, and get some of your um, feedback on uh, where we're at in, uh, in terms of this final model and ramification. Also I'd like to acknowledge we've got our specialist advisors here from Chapman Chirp as well as um, Deloitte's, so they have assisted us through this process. Um, we I remember last year we in, engaged with the Fano uh, through a couple of rounds of engagement to get your aspirations, come out with some concepts and some, some models. We took all that feedback and worked with our special advisors and came to this, um, I guess, point in resolution with the booklet and what we're going to be, be showing here tonight in terms of the presentation. So just to, just to like to welcome everyone here initially. Um, I'll get um, everyone to introduce themselves. So you know who's at the the front row here, we've got our trustees as well uh, here. We do apologise for some of our trustees couldn't make it. There's a, there's a, a, a tangi out at the, the mill and then a few others have couldn't make, be here today because of the other personal reasons. So uh, just acknowledge those trustees and that they couldn't make it. But uh, your other trustees are here. This is going to be a long process as we go around the country. So no doubt all those other trustees will be picking up some of the slack. So it's a, quite a large uh, journey to take on these nine information hui. Uh, throughout the country and you, uh, so please get your whānau engaged if they live elsewhere in some of these other key areas we'll be visiting um, please let them know to, to come along um, to these um, information meetings and the, this SGM because that's where you get to get that more information that you requested of us that was one of the key things that you said to us what's the detail and I think we've answered that hopefully answered all those questions in terms of that detail in the booklet and, and in the presentation you're about to see so Firstly, I'll just get everyone along here to introduce themselves and then you can get an ascertain who they are. Uh, kia ora te whanau. Um, uh, kia ora um, ngā uri o Tātou Tātou o Te Wairoa Trust. Um, ko Lennox Love Toku Ingoa. Um, I te tahu toku mama. Um, ko Nati Kahungunu ki Hira Taunga um, te iwi. Um, ko Wairamarama te marae. Ko Nati Kuru Kuru, kuru te hapu. Um, I te tahu a toku papa, uh, ko te ate awa, um, te iwi, um, ko toku maru te waka, um, ko, ko waikawa, um, no waikawa ahau. Um, uh, ko Lennox Love toku ingoa, 
Um, just want to, you know, it's, it's really good being here. I'm representing Deloitte, so um, as you'll see in your presentation, um, we've been doing just helping out with some modelling, just to try and look, look at way, ways ahead um, for the whānau here. So, you know, if you've got any questions, you know, we'll look forward to hearing from them. So, kia ora. Tēnā koe tau katoa, uh, ko te aroa tōku hononga ki Hawaii ki nui, ki Hawaii ki roa, ki Hawaii ki pā mama. Uh, ko nongo taha tōku maru i te ao i te pō, te pō i te ao. Ko te awa hou tōku toto e rere ana i tōku tinana. Ko roto rua nui a kahu mata momo e tōku ai o e ngā ngaru whati o te ao huri huri nei. Uh, ko ngā tirangi wewehi tōku ngā kau, e a hei ana i tōku toi ora. Uh, ko ko tarimano tōku wā huri mōwa e mōa ke tonu atu. A, ko Briar Peak tōku ingoa, he uri tēnei nā tāua ke heimwa, engari ki oku nei whakaaro, he uri hoki a hau nā te tiriti o Waipangi. A, kaore au i tupu ake ki te reo Māori e rere ana i tōku whare, a, kaore au i tupu ake ki te tirohanga Māori e kōripo ana i roto i a hau. Engari, ko era, ko era, ko era te ahua, O nga tāng, o e tahi o ngā tāngata Māori i tēnei rā. Uh, uh, my name is Brad Peet. I am a solicitor at Chapman Trip, uh, and I've been working on uh, the, the unit trust model with uh, Graham uh, for about a year now. So we're, we're here to, to support the trustees and take any uh, legal pātai that come up on the structure. Nā tēnā koutou. And I know this has been a really long journey for you all that spans much longer than my one year. Uh, I am aware of Te Tira Whakaemi and the 10 year journey that a lot of you have been on. So, e mihi anna hau ki a koutou katoa i tēnei pō. Kia ora. Tēnei koutou katoa. My name's Graham Olding. I've been uh, heading up the uh, legal team at Chapman Trip that's been working with the uh, trustees and various of you in the room on um, uh, pulling together le the legal aspects of this. Uh, it's been a real privilege for us to be involved and certainly a privilege for us to be here tonight as uh, we get to sit and listen to the discussion and hopefully, where necessary, uh, we can provide some legal viewpoint on this uh, as well. Uh, yeah, very much looking forward to the discussion this evening. Thank you. Anarira tu mai awa tu mai maunga ko koe kai takahia no tia ea. Au ko te puari Māori o Wairua Waikare Moana. E whakawhiti ana i roto i ngā puka puka nei ki tēnei ropu e kia nei ko te hononga o ngā awa. Tēnei mātai. Kia ora. Rā moto kiri ara, rā moto kiri ara. Ko rā moto te hau kāinga o te whānau huata. Uh, ko Ramoto Kiriara te Marae, ko Ngāti Mihi te Hapu. Uh, uh, and my name is Huia Huera. Um, I'm one of the trustees for um, Ngā Tokorima Hine Manuhiri. Kia ora. Uh, tēnā koutou whānau, uh, ko Maumau Kai te Maunga, ko Waitiro Hia te Awa, ko Rā Kai Pāka te Iwi, ko Pauline Symes tēnei a tua kinei. Tēnā koutou, um, I'm Hete Koko and I'm um, trustee for Paki Nuarua. Ka te rā kia whai kororia hōnu re harirui a kia i hō ngā mano. Tu uri uri whai o i o ki tōni ki te rangi me te whenua tātou i tōni ingoa te matua te tama te wairu e tapi me ngā ne hera pono. Ngā ngai tau toko mai ai a nei a ke nei ai. Ngā kia ora tātou, ko tōku ingoa, ko Bobby McGregor. Uh, not the happy one at Kurupakiaka. I stand as one of the trustees for the Wairo Tapokara one. Kia ora ratat. Kia ora, Namahi Mahana Kiakoto. I'm Moana Rongo from Rongo Mawahin in Naitarakato. Kia ora. Kia ora, Fano. Phil Beatty, I hope. Uh, we meet again here. Uh, Mum's over here. My mother is a Vauda Charoa Beatty. Um, my father is uh, uh, Wilson Hoitawa. Uh, and beyond that is uh, Mahi and so on. Uh, the old man is more 
uh, Waikato Mona. So um, that's who I am. And I must add, there's another trustee that's hiding away down the back. Hey, <laughs> Oha. Kia ora. Well, thank you all um, for introducing yourselves. As says there's Oha down the back with um, apologies from Pity Munro, Carwin Jones, and uh, up here at the Tapani as well, yeah, as well as Carmen Morrell. So the, that's the 14 trustees. Um, as well as our support services in terms of that. Also acknowledgement to Trust Board for providing, since it's a special junior meeting, uh, they're taking minutes, and you've got Dev over in the corner doing registrations and special votes, and also you would have introduced some of the trustees coming in, picking up your know, information booklets and signing their attendance register. So we've reached the magical number of 100, which says in our trustee that constitutes a valid meeting, so we're moving forward. Uh, also the other issues of health and safety, um, if the alarm does go off, exits are clearly highlighted. Faripaku is out the back to the to the left and down the hall. So yeah. Other than that, I don't want to hold us up. Um, we want to get in this presentation. It's about 40 minutes long, um, so it is a bit of a, a, a watch. So we'll um, we'll turn the lights off and kick into it. And after that, we'll come back. Um, hopefully, people have got some questions, and we'll um, be prepared here to to answer that. Kapa. Koto Katoa, no mai haere mai. Thank you for joining us today as we take the next step in our settlement journey and vote on our final representation and asset arrangements. We are Tato Tato o Te Wairua Trust, the post settlement governments entity or PSG for the iwi and hapu of Te Rohe o Te Wairua. It is our responsibility on behalf of our iwi, hapu and Fano, to manage the redress that will be received as part of our settlement with the Crown. Tato Tato o Te Wairua has 14 initial trustees elected by our iwi, hapu and Fano, who are helping to ensure we build a solid foundation for the future growth and development of our settlement redress. Our initial trustees aim to serve a term of two years. Their first term began in November 2016. Our initial trustees are responsible for managing and overseeing a review process in relation to the ownership arrangement for the trust's assets and representation, our current mahi. Consulting with representatives of our iwi and hapu to decide whether to purchase any properties that might become available during the initial two-year period. Maintaining records and information that will facilitate the initial trustees' preparation of the first annual plan, five-year strategic plan and annual report. This presentation covers the key points in your information booklet relating to the final representation model for Tato Tato o Te Wairua Trust. Following this presentation, we will have 30 minutes for you to ask any questions you may have. Katahi ka kaputi Tato, so you can meet your representatives and our support teams who are here today. Also, if you are not yet a registered member of Tato Tato o Te Wairua, we can help you to register today so that you can vote. In August and November 2017, we held engagement hui around Aotearoa to seek your thoughts and feedback on our aspirations, values and principles and on potential models for our asset and representation arrangements. It was great to see so many Fano participating, and lots of new faces too, with many tuning in to watch the live streamed videos and sending us their messages online. We received invaluable feedback from you during this time, which has shaped our trustees' mahi over 2018. 
We are now back on a hikoi across Aotearoa, holding a round of hui in Te Wairoa, Tūranganui Akiwa, Here Taunga, Rotorua, Kirikiri Roa, Tamaki Makaurau, Te Papa Ioia, Te Whanganui Atara, me o Tautahi. We are presenting exactly the same information at each hui which will cover a recap of our settlement journey to get to this point and how we will manage the settlement redress, including how kāhui representation and our unit trust model will work. The hui will be an opportunity to ask all the pātai you have, and also, if you haven't voted online or by post already, to vote on our representation and asset arrangement model and trust deed changes via special ballot box. Your vote is really important to us. Remember, it is you who will determine if we can move forward with the proposed final asset and representation arrangements. It's you, our people, who ultimately decide on the future of Tato Tato o Te Wairua. Our settlement journey began more than 30 years ago when our Matua first lodged historical treaty claims with the Waitangi Tribunal in the early 1980s for the area between Tūranganui Akiwa and Mohaka the Wairua Inquiry District. Ultimately, our whakapapa and whanaungatanga helped us to work together. Our iwi, hapu and Fano eventually formed into a single large natural grouping under the name of Te Tira Whakaimi o Te Wairua, made up of seven clusters of iwi, hapu and Fano groups across the district. It took years of intense discussion, consultation and negotiation to finally get to our deed of settlement and PSG, Tato Tato o Te Wairua Trust ratification, which our iwi, hapu and Fano confirmed in 2016. Our official deed of settlement signing ceremony was held in Wairua on the 26th of November 2016. The iwi and hapu of Te Rohe o Te Wairua Claim Settlement Bill had its first and second readings in Parliament on the 20th of December 2017 and 15th of March 2018 respectively, which were well attended by Fano. On the 6th of September 2018, we celebrated the third and final reading of our settlement bill in Parliament. This was an historic occasion for our iwi, hapu and Fano and the culmination of many, many years of hard work that our tipuna started. Our settlement gained the royal assent on the 13th of September 2018 and is now law. We are now here today to present to you the final representation and asset arrangements for Tato Tato o Te Wairua Trust. You are being asked to vote on the following special resolutions. The adult registered members resolve to amend the Tato Tato o Te Wairua Trust Deed as set out in the marked up trust deed entitled Revised Version November 2018 and approve the unit trust model as the asset and representation model for the Tato Tato o Te Wairua Trust. The Trust needs to pass this special resolution so that we can have an agreed representation model and way of managing our settlement assets. The Trust asks all Fano to review the proposed representation and asset arrangement model and then to vote yes to approve the special resolution. The special resolution must receive at least 75% support of valid votes cast for it to be passed. The current trust deed, ratified in August 2018, has been updated to reflect the proposed final representation and asset arrangement model. The marked up trust deed, entitled Revised Version November 2018, can be accessed on our website in the Documents section. If the special resolution does not receive the required level of support, the current trust deed, ratified in August 2018, will stand and a new set of trustee elections will be held. What it really means is that we will lose the opportunity to move forward that our iwi, hapu and Fano have been waiting for for so long. 
Fano, our ultimate goal has been to move as quickly as possible through the legislative process to complete Crown involvement in this part of our journey and move into a position of holding our destiny in our own hands. We are pleased that we have achieved this and it is now solely up to our iwi, hapu and Fano to make the big decisions on our future. This is an exciting time. It's you, our people, who'll decide on the final asset and representation arrangements. Your participation in this vote is crucial to a successful future for the iwi and hapu of Te Rohe o Te Wairua. The voting period is open from Saturday the 3rd of November to 12pm Monday 26th of November 2018. The Independent Returning Officer, elections.com, is running this voting process. All adult registered members of Tato Tata o Te Wairua are eligible to vote. There are three ways to vote. You can vote by post, online, or by ballot box at these hui. For voting inquiries, including requests for replacement voter packs, please contact the election helpline on 0800 666 or for overseas residents, 0064 377 3530 or email edo at elections.com. What happens after the vote? We expect to receive the results within one week of vote closing. The Trust will notify all members of the outcome of the vote, so keep an eye on your email as well as the Trust's website and Facebook page for updates. If the Trust achieves the required support for introducing this final representation and asset arrangement model, the Trust will make the required changes to the Trust deed and new Kahui Tato Tato representatives will be elected by the end of March 2019. The Tato Tato representatives will be the directors of the corporate trustee of Tato Tato o Te Wairua Trust. Our new Tato Tato representatives will focus on finalising Tato Tato o Te Wairua five year strategic plan, which is in draft form at the moment. A consultation process will be run next year amongst our members so that we can get your feedback on this important document. At our engagement hui in 2017, we presented some possible models for the future structure of Tato Tato o Te Wairua for you to consider. We discussed how these models could be applied separately or parts taken from each to create a final model. You told us what you thought of the models presented to you and why, what aspects you liked and what parts you didn't like, and what further detail you needed that would enable you to make an informed decision. We have listened to your views and those contained in further information gathered and have brought them together to develop a recommended final representation and asset arrangement model for the future structure of Tato Tato o Te Wairua. It is this final model that you are being asked to vote on now. If you vote yes to this model, and we strongly encourage you do, this is how we will manage the settlement redress received on the settlement date, 12th of November 2018, to benefit our iwi, hapu and Fano for generations to come. Our recommended representation and asset arrangement is 7 kahui, cluster groups, each with a legal structure in place in order to be a unit holder in Tato Tato or Te Wairua Trust upon settlement. A unit trust model, with each kahui holding units in Tato Tato o Te Wairua Trust. We had to consider which model would deliver more immediate benefits and greater control of income derived from the settlement for the kahui and our iwi, hapu and Fano right from the outset. But we also had to incorporate parts of key strengths of existing PSG models around collective mechanisms of asset management and economies of scale through keeping the principle intact while allowing for kahui seeking independence to be enabled to do so without the need for further tato-tato trustee changes or special resolutions. 
We have looked closely at all other PSG models of a similar size to Tato Tato and how representation and delivery of benefits to their members is undertaken. However, none of these models are believed to be an appropriate, identical match for the management of our settlement redress due to our circumstances. We are unique and we need a unique model for our settlement that is tailored specifically to the needs of iwi, hapu and Fano. This is your opportunity to vote on the final representation and asset arrangement model that will help shape the future of our tamariki and mokopuna. The unit trust model reflects a combination of the concepts and models presented to you in the August and November 2017 engagement hui. It incorporates a combination of both consolidated and diversified asset ownership. Where the principal settlement is kept together and income derived is either reinvested or distributed to kāhui. In regards to being grouped by kāhui, the feedback we have received is that many Fano think it's best to continue on the path that we have forged through the settlement process so far being grouped by hapu for representation, then coming together under one umbrella group. Many Fano say they are used to the kāhui structure and feel that it is fair that each group can elect its own representative as trustees on the board. That way, each smaller group's voice is heard, but overall, we are stronger together as one. So, after considering your feedback, the initial trustees recommend we continue with the existing kāhui representation approach for Tato Tato o Te Wairua Trust. Let's now take a close look at the key features of the unit trust model and how the kāhui representation will work within it. All this information is contained in the information booklet from page 14 onwards. So how will kāhui representation work? First and foremost, under the unit trust model, each kāhui needs to have a structure in place in order to be a unit holder in Tato Tato or Te Wairua Trust. There are several requirements for a kāhui structure to stand. 1. It needs to be robust and have clear provisions around the appointment of its governors. 2. The structure may be charitable. However, if it is charitable, it will be restricted to charitable activities. If your kāhui does not have a structure in place currently, it is recommended that a discretionary trust is set up to represent your kāhui on Tato Tato o Te Wairua Trust. A template trust deed has been prepared which can be aligned to the specific needs of your kāhui. This can be accessed on the document section of our website. It takes approximately three months to set up a discretionary trust. More information around the rules of operation for discretionary trusts can be found on page 17 of the information booklet, and we can answer any part I you have on this after this presentation. If you already have a structure in place to represent your kāhui, your options are 1 to continue using your current structure upon settlement date, two, to set up a discretionary trust as another entity using the template trust deed, three, to incorporate aspects of the template trust deed into your current structure by amending your current structure's governing documents. The current trust deeds for the various kāhui who are establishing a new discretionary trust to hold units in Tato Tato o Te Wairua Trust can be accessed on the document section of our website. Let's take a look at how kāhui are represented on Tato Tato o Te Wairua Trust. Each kāhui will elect one representative to Tato Tato o Te Wairua Trust to be its Tato Tato representative. The elected Tato Tato representative will be a director of the corporate trustee of Tato Tato o Te Wairua Trust. We'll talk more about how the corporate trustee works soon. Each kāhui will have a representative beneficial entity which will hold units in Tato Tato o Te Wairua Trust. Each beneficial entity will hold the same number of units initially. 
one unit equals one dollar of financial and commercial redress, excluding the value of the interest received as part of an initial distribution to Kahui. Now let's explain what having a corporate trustee means. A corporate trustee is a company which acts as the trustee of a trust. The people who would have been trustees of the trust are appointed as directors. As mentioned before, the elected Tato Tato representative will be a director of the corporate trustee of Tato Tato o Te Wairua Trust. We recommend having a corporate trustee for several reasons. One, it reduces the administrative burden on the trust. What this means practically is that authorised person or persons can bind the trust instead of all trustees having to sign contracts. Two, it provides protection for trustees and their whānau. Legally, trustees are personally liable and this can put them and their whānau at risk. The establishment of a corporate trustee provides a layer of protection for those directors who are tasked with this important mahi for the trust. The establishment of corporate trustees is a common approach for a trust managing assets of a significant value, including PSGEs. For example, Ngāti Whātua Ōrāke and Ngāti Pro both have corporate trustees. We think it is important to our values to include a charitable trust arm as part of the unit trust model. This charitable trust will hold two units in Tato Tato o Te Wairua Trust. The focus of the charitable trust will be to run charitable activities for the benefit of the members of the iwi and hapu of Te Rohe o Te Wairua. Equally, we also need to have a part of the trust dedicated to running our commercial activities. Our commercial arm will be managed through a commercial company and board. When we look at board representation on the commercial company, we must ensure this board is separate from the Tato Tato board. The commercial board will prepare a statement of investment policy and objectives, which includes the parameters under which the commercial company will operate and the commercial board will make investment decisions within those parameters. The SIPO must be approved by the directors of the corporate trustee of Tato Tato o Te Wairua Trust. When we look at who sits on the commercial board, we recommend that a minimum of five directors will be appointed and removed by the corporate trustee. At least one member has to reside in the Wairua district. Directors will have their remuneration set by the Tato Tato board on a fixed fee basis. They will be appointed for a two year term initially, then every three years thereafter. All directors may be reappointed for a further term or terms. An appointment process would be held to replace a vacancy more than six months out from expiry. Where a vacancy existed within six months of an expiry, the vacancy would remain until the next appointment. Appointments will be made on a best person for the role basis. That is, they must have the ability and expertise to maximise returns that will either be reinvested or distributed to kahui. To ensure the best candidate for the role, selections for candidates will need to be done in consultation with a suitably qualified independent agency. What happens to our forest asset? Our forests are treated separately within the unit trust model and are run by their own limited liability companies due to our shared interest with our neighbouring iwi. By the fifth anniversary of the unit trust model being ratified, the beneficial entities representing Kahui with interests in the forests must enter an agreement outlining their interests. If a beneficial entity becomes independent, they will receive shares in the relevant forestry company in proportion to their interest outlined in the agreement. We will discuss some long-term financial forecasts for the unit trust model later on in this presentation. But at a distributions level, part of the interest accrued will be distributed to each beneficial entity over three years from the date the unit trust model is ratified in proportion to their units. 
From the fourth year on, distributions will be made corresponding to the unit interest in December every year at 40% of profits. If a kahui did not want to receive some or all of their annual distribution, then this could be held by a commercial board for up to six months. A kahui could also reinvest some or all of its distribution with commercial board that would result in increased units for that kahui. There are set rules when it comes to deferred selection properties, or DSPs. The beneficial entity of a kahui may choose to purchase a DSP during the first three quarters of the DSP selection period for the relevant DSP, after which the commercial board may purchase the DSP. Where only one kahui has an interest in a DSP, that kahui may notify the Tato Tato board in writing that it wishes to purchase it and work with Tato Tato board to go through the DSP process. The Tato Tato board will instruct the commercial board to purchase the DSP and transfer it to the kahui or its nominee. Note under the deed of settlement there's no provision to nominate another entity to purchase DSPs. Where there's an overlapping interest in a DSP, all the kahui with overlapping interests must establish and nominate a joint entity which they must determine their respective interests in to purchase the DSP. They must then notify the Tato Tato board that they wish to purchase the DSP jointly, then work with the trustee to go through the DSP process. The Tato Tato board will instruct the commercial board to purchase the DSP and transfer it to the joint nominated entity. The price for a DSP will initially be satisfied by the commercial board and on transfer to the kahui will be satisfied by a payment of cash through a redemption of units or a mixture of both by the beneficial entity representing the kahui. Where a beneficial entity has not exercised its right to purchase a DSP during the first three quarters of the deferred selection period, or no kahui has an interest in the DSP, the commercial board will be able to purchase the DSP. Rights of first refusal properties, RFRs, will have a similar process to that of DSPs. Where an RFR is triggered, the Tato Tato board will notify the kahui that has indicated an interest and work through the process together. Where there are overlapping interests in RFRs, the Tato Tato board will notify the kahui that have indicated an interest and these kahui may establish a joint entity to purchase the property. Where a beneficial entity does not confirm it wishes to purchase the property within a certain time frame, the commercial board will be able to purchase the properties. Together, all these features make up our final representation and asset arrangement model. Now let's take a closer look at the kahui relationship with Tato Tato or Te Wairua Trust. As explained earlier on, each kahui will elect one person to be its representative on Tato Tato or Te Wairua Trust, the Tato Tato representative for that kahui and a director of the corporate trustee. It is important that the relationship between Tato Tato or Te Wairua Trust and each kahui is two-way. The Tato Tato representative will report to Tato Tato or Te Wairua Trust on the kahui activities annually. Equally, the Tato Tato representative will report back to the kahui on Tato Tato or Te Wairua Trust's activities annually. When it comes to appointing komatua as and when required, the kahui will appoint one komatua to the komatua council for Tato Tato or Te Wairua Trust. In the engagement hui in 2017, we discussed whether there should be the option for a kahui, or a rōpū as it was referred to then, to leave Tato Tato or Te Wairua if it decided that it wanted to be independent. Under this final representation and asset arrangement model, it is proposed that the kahui may become independent from Tato Tato or Te Wairua Trust via a special resolution vote.
75% of adult registered members in the Kahui must validly cast a vote in favour of the special resolution to ratify independence. A beneficial entity that has become independent may rejoin Tato Tato or Te Wairua Trust, but it will need to purchase new units at a minimum of $5 million to do so. The Tato Tato Trust deed needs to be amended to reflect the Kahui independence option. This will be done as part of this vote. There are several key principles achieved through the Kahui independence process. High voting thresholds ensure fairness and a robust process. All adult registered members of the Kahui can vote on the exit, which ensures transparency. And time limits mean that the Tato Tato board has certainty going forward. This is due to a Kahui only being able to trigger an independence request within the set time periods. Becoming independent will mean that the beneficial entity representing a kahui redeems its units in Tato Tato or Te Wairua Trust for cash and shares in the forest companies. However, a kahui will remain a part of Tato Tato or Te Wairua Trust in perpetuity because Tato Tato or Te Wairua is the PSG for the single comprehensive settlement with the Crown. The cultural redress received as part of the settlement will always stay with Tato Tato or Te Wairua Trust, as this is what is contained in our Deed of Settlement and Claim Settlement Act. An independent kahui will no longer have a trustee representative on Tato Tato board, but it will remain connected to Tato Tato or Te Wairua through a formal agreement including rights to purchase RFR land and how cultural redress matters will be handled. The amended trust deed will set out the process by which a beneficial entity can become independent from Tato Tato or Te Wairua. You can read more about the Kahui independence process on page 19 of your information booklet. Now that we've covered off how the unit trust model will be structured and how the Kahui representation will work within this model, let's take a look at the long-term financial benefit of this type of model. Over the past year, your initial trustees have engaged experts to undertake detailed financial modelling of the unit trust model to assess the likelihood of its financial viability in the long term, and so we can be sure that the iwi, hapu and whānau will benefit. We've looked at costs, return on investment, risks and relevant qualitative factors based on two scenarios. You can take a detailed look at the financial modelling on pages 20 to 25 of your information booklet. But we'll also go through this in some detail now. Scenario 1 is where we remain as Tato Tato Collective for at least 25 years, where all kahui manage their assets collectively. Scenario 2 is where one kahui leaves the collective at a defined point in time, for example after five years, and manages their share of putea individually. Underpinning all of this were several guiding principles. To mitigate risk, to preserve options, to ensure decisions by consensus, to ensure accountability and transparency that is fair to all parties involved and that involves arm's length decision making. You can read more about these guiding principles on page 21 of your information booklet. Now let's take a look at each modelled scenario. Under scenario 1, all kahui invest collectively for 25 years. This includes the forest asset with an estimated value of 6.035 million. The forest asset itself is estimated to generate 3% lease income and 1% capital gain per annum. An initial asset allocation of 40 to 60 between growth assets, low risk assets has been modelled. A final asset allocation of 60-40 between growth assets, low risk assets over six years. This happens once a broader range of investment opportunities are assessed and the collective has greater certainty over the investment term, asset classes and risk appetite that Kahui are comfortable with. 
Under Scenario 1, cash income and capital gains are expected to grow over time as a result of compound interest and reinvestment. Distributions have been modelled as follows. Initial three years of distribution consists of the total 7.4 million of net accrued interest distributed to Kahui. This is indicated by the dark purple columns in the diagram. Each Kahui receives approximately 1 million spread over three years if they retain all the units in Tato Tato or Te Wairua Trust. There is no distribution of the portfolio's profits in the initial three years, with 100% of earnings reinvested into the portfolio. From year four, distributions policy is set at 40% of earnings, with the remaining 60% being reinvested into the portfolio. This diagram shows the potential cash distributions for each kahui over 25 years based on these assumptions. The next two graphs illustrate the potential growth in the collective portfolio, diagram 3, and share allocated to each kahui, diagram 4, over 25 years. It also shows how the income is split between costs, distributions and reinvestment. At the end of year 25, under the modelled assumptions, the initial 113.4 million portfolio capital could grow to 244 million in aggregate. This includes the 6.035 million estimated value of the forest asset. This is an increase of 130.6 million. At the end of year 25, the initial 16.2 million portfolio capital per kahui could grow to 34.9 million in aggregate. This is an increase of 18.7 million. If any kahui decide they want to leave the Tato Tato Collective, we are keen to provide the right information to ensure they understand what this means from a financial and investment perspective. We have modelled Scenario 2 on the basis that a kahui becomes independent in Year 5. All kahui initially invest in the Tato Tato model for 5 years, as per Scenario 1. At the start of Year 6, one kahui becomes independent. Asset allocation and distributions remain the same as under the Tato Tato scenario. However, there are costs to becoming independent. On becoming independent, the kahui, for example, might incur a cost of 250000 that includes a contribution to legal, valuation and structuring costs as shown in this diagram. The kahui is also assumed to incur their own management costs to operate the fund of $450,000 per annum. This is $300,000 per annum greater than the kahui share of the operating costs of Tato Tato o Te Wairua. So we can compare the two scenarios on the same level. The kahui is assumed to invest in the same investment mix. That is, 60% growth assets and 40% low-risk assets with the same returns. It is important to understand that the kahui that has become independent may face practical constraints in order to achieve the same result as Scenario 1. It may be harder to achieve the same asset mix as the collective, as the smaller investment capital, approximately 15 million, compared with more than 100 million, may restrict the accessibility to invest in certain asset types such as private equity, commercial property, farms and businesses. It may also be more difficult to achieve the same level of diversification which results in greater risk exposure to single assets compared to the Tato Tato collective scenario. Assuming the same asset mix and distribution profile, the portfolio income of the kahui that becomes independent may be less than what could be achieved if the kahui remains in the Tato Tato model. This is due to the compounding effect of higher operating costs as shown in this diagram. Kahui capital could grow from 17.3 million to 26.1 million.
But this is 7.1 million lower than the modelled result of remaining in the Tato Tato collective. This is because of the higher operating costs of the kahui. To reduce the difference, the kahui could invest a greater portion of their capital in growth assets, reduce costs while preserving capability, or reduce distributions. The purple dotted line on this graph shows the level of distributions modelled by staying within the Tato Tato model. By comparing the level of distributions between Scenario 1 and Scenario 2, this is approximately 100% greater than those achievable under the independent scenario. Now let's recap. We are holding this hui so you can better understand how the proposed unit trust model and kahui representation will work. We want to ensure you are fully informed before you vote on the special resolution. It's up to you, Fano, to decide if we can move forward with the final asset and representation arrangements. We strongly encourage you to vote yes to the special resolution to 1. Amend the Tato Tato o Te Wairua Trust Deed as set out in the marked up trust deed entitled Revised Version November 2018. And 2. Approve the unit trust model as the asset and representation model for the Tato Tato o Te Wairua Trust. We'll now have questions and answers. Before we do, we have the following ground rules. Please respect others and remain quiet so that their part I can be heard clearly. Please identify yourself when you speak so we can record your name. Please keep questions related to the final representation and asset arrangement model. For other matters, please talk to one of your representatives. Thanks for your support, Fano. It's crucial in helping us build a positive future for the iwi and hapu of Te Rohe o Te Wairua. This is the beginning of our new era, and we are so excited and grateful to have you united with us on this journey. Nō reira, from all of us at Tato Tato o Te Wairua Trust, ngā mihi kia koutou katoa, tēnā koutou, mauri ora. Thank you. Thank you, Fanny, for listening to that. I know it was a bit uh, long, but it is quite complex, and, and it contains a lot of detail in there. So that was what um, we resolved as trustees, and what you wanted to see is what the detail and what it looks like. So uh, just acknowledging all the work that our trustees and our advisors have helped us through this process. It's been a long journey, um, but we believe we've listen to your feedback, we've listened to um, what you wanted to see in the model and hopefully you can see uh, where we've been heading with this uh, particular model. Um, but yeah, thank you again for, for listening and acknowledge the work again of all that have been involved in this. It's, it's been a hard journey to get to this point. Uh, but also the work of some of you, the, the car we have been doing as well. They've been trying to get themselves ready, prepared, a lot of this is we're trying to make sure we can lift the potential, the professional capa capability of everyone, not just a single group of people. This is about everyone right down to the grassroots level, making sure that they, they can see where this is, um, can benefit them, where they can be involved, where they can be engaged, and, and, and setting those aspirations for where they want to go with their um, settlement reduce. So we're trying to keep key aspects of certain models in this, as well as key, key, key um, feedback that we receive. So I'm hoping, um, along with all the trustees, that this particular model uh, seeks uh, your approval. Um, we've been working hard uh, on that, and I know everyone has. Um, it's been a long process, but it's been a rewarding one to make sure that we um, do this in a proper manner. Everyone gets to have, a, have their input on it. So kāpāi and, and, and thank you. So I'll open the floor up for any questions. Anyone got any questions? Uh, they can. Um, I'll get someone to be around. Uh, 
Kia ora tātou i aku rangatira. Nā whanaung o te rohe meki, o te rohe pōtai nei, o te wairo, te nei ka mihi atu ki a koutou. Nā mate huho o te wā nei, ka tika mihi atu ki a ratau. Tērā whanaung o tātou e noho nei ki roto i tēnei marae o te wairo nei, ka tika mihi atu ki a aia. O ti atira ki te hunga, kāri i kona i te rā nei. Atu i te tori te kau tau, tātou i hikoi nge tēnei hikoi, i omangia tēnei omanga roa. Ka whakāroa hau kia kore tātou e wareware ki a ratau, e nā ka hui hui ai tātou pera i te pō nei, kia hau nei me takoto rātou ki tō tātou taha, kia hoki ngā mahara ki a ratau. Nā reira, he moko puna tēnei o koutou e mihi ake. He whanaunga tēnei o koutou e mihi ake. Te nā koutou, hiri rauna, tēnā no tātou katoa. You know, as I was saying, one of the things that I'm reflecting on sitting here is our journey which started over 30 years ago. And I think when we meet at events like this, including this SGM, it's beholden on us not to forget those people who took that journey. And every decision we should make from now on should be a decision we think about carefully. And every decision we make now, we should reflect on them. And you know, one of the things I'm reflecting on is that for them it wasn't actually about the money. Um, I, I'm not going to lie to you, my job as the chief negotiator was to get as much money as possible. So that's what I did. I went all the way to the minister, uh, to the, minister the uh, treasurer, and when he said, you'll not get one cent more, I'd done my job. But the money was not the end. It was the means to the end. The reason our treaty issues emerged was because before the treaty was signed, we were in control of our destiny. We had the ability to look after ourselves. We had the ability to tend to ourselves. We had the ability to grow things. We had the ability to build things. And somehow, despite guarantees given on the 6th February 1840 and days after that, including when the treaty was signed in Tūranga, um, those guarantees weren't eventuated. And so we found ourselves in the 1970s and 80s unable to do much in our lives, unable to build things with relative uh, poverty and other factors impacting on our people. So for me, the, the, the money and what we do with it is not the important issue. It's what comes out of that at the end, and the end of that is something that benefits our people. It's perfectly right and appropriate for each of our kahui to have aspirations on behalf of their people and to have dreams. Kapai. It also makes no sense, because all the economics show that, to chop the pie up in so many pieces that in fact we do ourselves a disservice at the end of the day. And more importantly for me, we got here because we were able to work together as whanaunga. We didn't come together because the Crown said, yeah, the Crown came up with this idea called large natural groupings. And we said, well, you're not going to make us what we are. We're going to come together as whanaunga and maero. And so we did. We came together on our terms. So for me, whatever we do making our decisions moving forward, there are three principles which I think have to apply to what we do. The first of those is tato. We're about to go through a door, a tato, yeah? And that door is where we move from being able to tell everyone what went wrong in our history and what, what, uh, what uh, ails us now, going through that door to a different place where we're going to build something different. We're going to build something that looks like us. We're going to build something that serves us and we're going to build something that reflects who we are. That's what walking through that tato is. That's the first principle, tato. The second principle is tato. And that second principle is we got here because we stuck together. And for me, uh, and for those of you who know me, I'm very proud to be from Ngāti Rākau Pāka. I'm very proud to be from Ngāti Rungomai Wahine. I'm very proud to be from Ngāti Kahune. I don't separate those different things. Where am I going to end up? I'm going to end up in, in uh, uh, Manawarākau, which is a nūrupā behind the, the uh, Mormon chapel in Nuhaka. That's where I'm going to end up. But that doesn't mean I'm only there. I'm in Mahia. I'm in Wairo. I'm in Whakaki. That's where my whakapapa takes me. And for me, whatever we do moving forward, while it's really important that each of our individual areas feel that they're able to do what they need to do, the majority of effort must be about all of us 
because we all share the same common experience when it comes to this district. And actually, all of us connect to more than one part of this district. We only have to go back to our grandparents. So that's the second principle, tato. The third principle is kato. But when I talk about kato, I mean we've got to land this thing. So actually, we haven't landed the settlement yet, if you think about it that way. All we did was we got, the, we got some puti to go somewhere. Landing it is where we're going to be in 25 years' time. And for me, I'm happy enough to say that whatever model we have going forward, I don't want anything of it. I'm quite happy for it to be 25 years because it was never about me anyway. It was about my mokopuna and my children. I'm quite happy not to have any benefits coming to me. So long as I know that in 20, 25 years' time, I can see them coming to my people. And by the way, those 25-year projections are relatively conservative at $250 or $70 million. We have two existing settlements that started at $170 million and they're well over the billion-dollar mark at the moment. But as I said... At the end of the day, it's not about the money. At the end of the day, the simple reason we got into these things was our ability to look after ourselves on our terms, according to what's important for us, to have the ability to build the things we need to build, to help our people in whatever way that was, to have some real ability to do those things. Kia ora tata. John, just to acknowledge um, the efforts of the Te Tawakimi and your role played within getting landing, well not quite landing, but getting to the position we are at without your efforts in that, in that team. Excellent, well done, thank you. Any further questions? From I know, comp I know fine, the model is quite complex, but it, the complexity is a reflection of how we, kawi, we view things differently. Different kawi are at different stages, so it needs to have a kind of a flexibility aspect to it to, to reflect those differences. Uh, kia ora no tātou, a mere kōkiri tamanui. The first thing I must do is um, hail to the hard mahi that's, that's gone ahead. Um, my uh, principles would be, uh, the first one would be uh, make choices on the taha wairua. Nā moe moe ao nā, nā tūpuna ka heke mai ki a tātou, we tahi o tātou kai te mōhio ki tēnei me mā te e kite, Mata kite, ka mōhe o tātou i pēr hea te hia hia o o mātou pakeke ki tēnei huarahi mō o mātou mokupuna. I tēnei wā ko mātou nā mokupuna. Nā me pakeke ko mātou nā mokupuna. He anō, uh, kai te tautoko au ki a, ki a John, nei, it's not about us. We're the caretakers so that our mokupunas can get a better deal and don't feel ashamed because st stats tell us that it's not okay to be Māori. That's what needs turning around for us. It really is okay for being Māori. The other thing I have on, on, a, on um, a thing that I'm asking that, uh, here it is. Waikata Mona was taken off the, out of the loop from, I understand, from the legal advisors. Now, we've got to go around and you've got to allow our representatives to put that corridor all right. Because if we throw the new name that we've picked into the mix, our whānau out there going, we don't know what we're doing. So on the top of the agenda, our representatives must have uh, input to put the corridor all right, because just by a stroke of a pen, you took us out of the equation, but worse than that, the mamai that went through the whānau as we begin to think we should turn on each other, that's not right. Karete na te tika. And the ture, the stroke of the pen came from you. So I'm saying, Without apology, put our reps somewhere at the top of the, the, the ladder so that they have a chance while people ain't tied to hear our side of the story and get it right. So that's one thing I'd, I'd actually ask this, this road show to do on our behalf. But the rest of it sounds like to me, it has the smell of success through uh, lots of money 
and uh, it's the best model on offer at the moment. And kia hone, namihi tino hōhonu kia koutou, finding a way forward for us. But if it, all our decisions can come through ki te taha wairua, that for me will always show respect for the pakekes or the ancient warriors that went ahead of us trying to get us to a better, better level. So, kia ora. Thank you, Benny. And then uh, we know that uh, it's been the bane of our existence, page 27 uh, in the booklet, and those lists and names uh, as we progress from the crown list, uh, basically. And we were able to make those changes with our previous trustee to now what is a basically the kahui making those decisions. So we're trying to tata tata in themselves and I think um, Graham and the team have apologised for that error they did make in, that, in, in the Tongawa trustee and we'll work to understand the, the, the kahui is working through a process to bring it back together. Go. Cool. Tēnā tātou, uh, ko Shane Walker tōku ingoa, um, he tau tōku ana ngā mihi ku mihi hea, uh, ka nui aku mihi ki au koutou uh, i ngā māngai, ngā whiriwhiri kōrero, uh, i au koutou mahi miharo, uh, kua, kua puta mai i a tātou i tēnei pō. I've got just one pātou, really, um, and it might be more for Deloitte's, but I um, agree the conservative figures on um, page 23. Just interested what your assumed uh, compounding growth rate is to get to that 380 uh, with your um, considerations of the distributions obviously throughout that that time I'm, I, I want to congratulate and acknowledge the trustees on setting that because it is conservative and that it's achievable um, which is great but the realities are that it's probably going to be a whole lot greater and my other question on page 22 around your assumed operating cost um, Wondering how realistic they might be in terms of 1.3 for all of our Fano, or for the for the trustee cluster, and um, even with the 2% CPI growth in there, uh, is that going to be realistic to achieve some of the aspirations um, of the Fano? Kia ora. Um, it, it, is, it is a conservative estimate, but um, we just base things on, on a prudent a prudent model, a prudent tried and true that we've, we've been done, done, been done before. So um, like, like Mutt was saying... Um, <coughs> Hear me now? Feel better? Yeah, so um, just like saying, Matua, it, it, is, it is a prudent um, but a tried and true model. Um, th those things, um, and when you're talking about the, the costings for those, um, for the operating costs, you know, again, that was like based on you know the current model. Like, um, if, if you're looking at your, um, you know, you, you know, your, your compounding, so that, that is um, say prudent tried tried model for for that costing. So, so we'll base it on so one set of operating costs across. You know, if everything was all in one. Um, but if someone decided to, to break off from that, they, they'd probably be you know, nailing that, have, have their individual operating costs on, on top of that. So that's what extends it by an extra 300k. k on that, so. yeah. Does that answer your question, Shane? Yeah, yeah. What a twin. Yeah, Shane, in terms of those um, operating costs for Tata Tata, we're trying to be running as lean as mean as possible. So we don't want to have a big team of people, um, you know, three or four employees, that's it. Um, a lot of the delivery of the benefits are going to be occurring down at the Kauri level. So that's where that um, um, kind of, there'll be a structure down there for them to deliver. So, but Tata Tata itself, it's going to try and run as, as slim as possible. And we don't need to have a big uh, corporate body or corporate team to 
run some of these services because we want in the kahui to set those priorities on what they are and then work collaboratively together with other kahui, with Tato Tato and achieve that rather than um, Tato Tato building up a big corporate body of people trying to deliver all these services through all the kahui. It's just best for the kahui to set those priorities themselves and then work out how best to deliver them. Hopefully that 1.3 million we stay under. Uh, kura katoa, Michelle McRoy. Uh -huh. um, so my, my, um, that isn't a question, it's more like a tunnel. Um, so we just, we've been showing projections of what the outcome will be. We've got investments, uh, how much money we'll have in the bank. My tunnel is, I want to see, I don't want to see 50% of our people incarcerated. I want to see improvement in people's lives. I want to see improvement for my mokopuna, a better improvement of our taio, um, that we aren't the higher um, unemployment rate, that half our whānau aren't living in Australia. We want them to, um, you know, work in my kita kainā. Um, and I agree with the others, with Johnny and them, I want their money to stay together. I want to see an improvement in our people. Yeah, you need to get the money, but it's all about our mokopuna and having a better life. Kia ora. Okay. Uh, we go. There's a lot of responsibility here, not just on Tato Tato, but on these Kauri Trusts. So that's where a lot of, we're trying to get to the grassroots to make sure these benefits like the employment opportunities, we make sure they're developed at the grassroots because that's where the, the, the answer to the, some of these people, the questions are, making sure our whānau are there, can come back to live, can come back to benefit. You know, if we, what we're seeing with other PSG, some of those kind of grassroots benefits don't get delivered until 10, 15 years down the track. By setting up the structure now and having those kahui in place hopefully provides the foundation that we can start this from the outset and not focus on the building, building up Tata Tata's capability, but bringing up, building up a big team of people and trying to do this everywhere. So we kind of diversify this a little bit, the responsibility to the Kahuis. So there's a lot of responsibility on the Kahuis to prove themselves. They have the capability and capacity. Now what the models propose, if you don't have that capability and capacity, you've got the option there to put the money back with Tata Tata, let them manage it until I get my capability and capacity on the ground to do what I need to do in terms of delivering those benefits. And during that time, we could be accessing you know, um, government funding to do that, rather than spend my money of my distributions, approach the TPKs, the MBIEs, the MPIs of this world, to give me the funding to um, increase my capability as a kahu. So kahui are on notice here to say, you know, it's those people within those kahui, it's time for them to step up and become professional. Because we were looking for professional people who wanted to move this forward while professionally lifting everyone's capability at the same time not just a small group of people and, and assets and trustees and that and their team it's wide it needs to be everyone involved in this journey together the tata tata model <coughs> so, uh, so a lot of hapu out there and whanau out there have aspirations so get Get to your kāris and deliver and make sure you hold them account for your aspiration when you want to see in the settlement for them. So we're, we're creating the mechanism and the means to which Tata Tata can give those kāri the capability through this, but Bano, Hapu, get onto these kāri and hold them account to make sure they deliver and set their structures up for the, so that you can benefit. Kaupapa. What's been said has all this problem is from the government themselves. They give away land to another hapu and then when it's been trying to be corrected, they say, well, you fellas battle it out together. And this is a, what they really wanted 
was for those lawyers to learn about Māori tikanga. I'm not trying to digress or anything, but way up the far north, the whānau's been duped by the government because the people who is trying to make the deal got no idea whatsoever. And making problems for our people. And I know it's been settled here, but up the Ngāpuhi, they've been given a raw deal. And uh, I, we had a meeting with uh, just about a week ago with land from Waikara Moana, which Kahununu has a stake in. And then they, they said, well, the government made the deal. Oh, well, Waikara Moana takes uh, the land. And now they're telling us that we have to fight for it again. And so I, I get very just, just damn well upset at this, what's happening. They're pushing us around, telling us what we're going to do. And I, what I say, they should have the um, Member of Parliament who has, uh, can identify, um, uh, I identify uh, Taha Māori. They don't know nothing about Taha Māori. They just make words and then they get the Māori to fight the Māori. And I just want to make that note. I'm upset. I didn't agree with the, with the, the, the no, three, number three because it hurts about me and I had a lady here just mention up. Ko te mea nui, ko te, ko te taha wairua. That's what keeps us breathing and that's what keeps us and to recognise our identity, koi mata. I'm very, very, I'm a wairua man. And when you've got the right wairua, you, there's no problem at all. Our chiefs, when they said the word, no one contested them. Their word was law. They never had the trouble. No, 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 and the, the lady here said there, no, the rato mako here he kia hunu nui te po. Hey, they say, well, they gone. No, they still are here amongst us. Kei te loro tunu rato ina whakaro e ina wā. So I just want to just make that, I just get upset here, and I want to keep it nice because manaki te te tahi ki te tahi. And we can talk, but not to be uh, naughty. And uh, so I just want to say that I'm listening to the quarter that's going on here. And oh, I don't know. I don't know. Chairman, when we talk about uh, Kahui independence, is there a clause, should things not go right, that we have a re-entry? Yes, there is a clause about re-entry in terms of if a Kahui did go independent and took the un units with them. But like every uh, re-entry, there needs to be a minimum set about what, how much that is. And the, the trustees have resolved to set that minimum at $5 million dollars. Or five million uh, units to buy back in, um, because basically you need to have some money to come back to the table to be represented. You, know, you can't go away and spend all your money and then come back and then have uh, decisions over everyone else's. You need to have skin in the game, of course. Yeah. So yeah, if you do go out, so the, it's five million of assets. So you could have five million of assets of a Kauri left. So the, your Kauri membership needs to keep a close eye on your balance sheet. So if it got to that level you would need to then uh, resolve a special resolution of your kawi to come back in and join back in. But, yeah, it is there.
<laughs> so, the, so, so the question was, uh, so the question was, if you're registered with a particular car that went bust, can you hop over to another caster and join them? Of course you can. You can you can do this for the whole process. Your fuck off papa takes you to where it goes. So if you can register now currently with multiple kawe and participate in their processes. So you don't need to wait for one to go bust. You can you know, exercise your right to be it in, the, in the, all those kawe in which you are your fuck up papa too. Well that's up well that's up to that kawe to keep a close eye on them. Or close eyes on multiple people. So that prevents that from happening. So there's there's Tata Tata put um, three key restrictions on 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 uh, Kawi getting uh, annual annual distributions. One, obviously they need to have audited accounts. So if Kawi doesn't have audited accounts, they're not getting the money. If they don't have an AG, AGM every year, they're not getting the money. And if they don't have um, trusty elections run to a proper process as described, they're not getting their money. So this at, that's the bare minimum. Anything above that, we would be encroaching too much more on, on a car in, in terms of setting the investment parameters and setting what they could invest in and, and can't invest in. That's the role of that individual car members to set that. But from Tato Toto's perspective, we need to be assured that you know, some basic principles are being met. And those are the three key basics. Oh yes. We beat ourselves to death on this. We're, we're good then. Is there a stop point where we say uh, where it can be um, ruled on, or does the car be sit there and just take its own energy out of itself? Is there going to be a ruling board that says this stop here? Yeah. So you're talking about conflict within a kahui? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, from a, from the trustee perspective. I think there is a conflict resolution process in the in the trustee. Um, so they take care of its own kahui kind of conflict. They need to follow a bit of tikanga. You would get Komatua involved. You would go through a process there. Conflict with other kahui. Um, Tata Tato has a dispute pre resolution process in there to make sure that that conflict doesn't occur. So, But we, are, we're not, we don't want to be adjudicators and rulers of kahui. But we can only set a minimum criteria. We want to leave, leave the kahui to be independent as much as we can without them and oversight for us we become basically a collective car but so we don't want to do that question oh the one's back okay fine got a wiggy uh kia ora I, 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 there's a uh, good corridor in regards to the kahui, but one of the other things I haven't seen is there needs to be an acknowledgement of all these kahuis for getting Tato Tato also to where it is today, because without them we wouldn't have achieved that. Um, in regards to the kahuis, yeah that's cool, but I still believe that there were some things that Tato Tato should have done that now it's the responsibility of the kahuis, and we've all been talking about it. Like, we believe that there were some things that should have been put in place prior to being it left in the kahui's hands. However, um, how things are, you know, in regards to um, your information booklet and your esteemed forecast of where we are with all our money. John's correct, it was never about the money. However, that money will help to achieve to move our people forward. And some whānau said there are things that need to happen now for our mukapuna. So if we make our people well now, our mukapuna will be well by the time they get here. And I think that's probably where I see the kahui's at. Where I also see them at is they will be the liaison between all the other government agencies to ensure that where there's shortfalls in government agencies, pr providers, orders that we will identify where the gaps are and how can we make them better. I also would like to see us adopt and take on board the documents that were put out by our tipunas that are no longer here, and that's Puaute Atatu, 
and the actual um, document that the late Judge Mick Brown put out of the state of Māori children today because it's still relevant to this day. I suppose that's where I see the kahus coming on board when you talk about getting to grassroots. But for it to get to grassroots too, you need to listen to the grassroots because sometimes that's where it's at. It's about you need to start listening to them and taking it on board because all that corporate stuff's all good and all that and that's all fine and you need it. But what does it mean when it ain't getting to the grassroots if you don't know what the grassroots want? So I think that's where the push for Tato Tato is, to also look at building the capacity within Wairau itself, for Wairau, by Wairau, to Wairau only. That's about us maintaining our rangatiratanga. I'd love to see us ensuring that in the real, in the Māori education, that we're pushing particularly, I'll, I'll, um, please don't get embarrassed by this, I want to acknowledge our um, kuia down there in the front, uh, Liz Hunkin. You know, why reinvent the wheel? Let's go to the experts and start. That's where we need to come and that's where we need to adopt that type of things. They're here already. So that's what I want to see from Tato Tato. There's an expectation of what the kahui want. I've got an expectation of what Tato Tato, what I want to see you do. So when you start liaising to us in a better way, ka pai. Kia ora. You'll notice it's a nice corridor uh, tonight, yeah. eh? Thank you, Wiki. Thank you very much for your nice corridor. <laughs> no, there's definitely, uh, definitely some key messages there. So make sure that those avenues to those crown agencies are there available for the kawi. If there's something not happening on the ground, Tata Tata being their collective front face for external agencies, making sure they're held account to address some of these issues. You know, kawi got to think strategic, long term, you know, what's important to them now. Um, so we haven't waited to do distributions, you know, 10, 15 years. Distributions come up front and start straight away. So you got the booty to do some of this work. Kawa. Richard, 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 Na mia no ki o tatou nei pakeke, kei fe mai te atahu a hoki. Kia ora, Liz, Irina, Miriama, Kroa no hoki, Gary, kia ora, Bill, pai te ki te a koutou. Ah, ki a koe no hoki, uh, John, um, ki te toutoku i o kōrero, mi o whakaaro mo te te, te toko toru, Nga me e toru, e tātou e haere whakamua, e nui aku mahara ki e te tira whakaemi, ki taua wā, ki te community hall, the community centre. I think what I remember most about it is it being there, it was being in the room. I think I remember the transparency. Kuara hei to tōku ingoa, uh, ko hini manuhiri te kāhui, hoi anō. Mi mihi atu ki o tātou nei uh, rangatira o te kaupapa nei, a tātou tātou o te wairoa, me te nui o nga mahi, i mahi a e kōtou, uh, e mahi uaua, e mahi taumaha, uh, nā reira, he mihi nui, he mihi, he mihi aroha ki a koutou. Um, hoi anō rā, disappointed in the lack of transparency, the, the, the meetings at, at the Vista where, our, where we weren't allowed to be there. That was disappointing, it's still disappointing. Um, 
Um, I'd like to thank, thank you for the email, emailing out the booklet, because I'm not sure if it's worth the paper it's printed on. We asked for, a, we, 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 just, we talked about a lot of things. We talked about devolution. We were told we can't come up with any figures for individual kahui because it's a collective settlement. And now we're going to allow a kahui to leave without the collective having a say in that. So removing that 75% of all of us, tato tato, to be part of a decision on whether one of our kahui want to leave is disappointing. I mean, if we think about tato tato, where did that come from? Me pata to kia fire eating up here. Tato tato taiho taiho. Where are talking me a tuafa? Tato tato kato me taiho anuhuki. Because I don't think we've got it right yet. I'm trying to draw an analogy to this uh, units trust model. I've got share market, I've got casino. I'm thinking casino is possibly closer. You can, you can cash your chips and you can only buy chips from the house. You've got to, well, you've got to, you can only give your chips back to the house. You know, you can leave the game. If you want to come back in, you've got to buy at least $5 million worth of chips. Where did this model come from? I didn't hear units trust model said anywhere I could be wrong, but I watched a lot of those live stream. I didn't hear I didn't hear Unit Trust model come up anywhere as a Fakar or so. I'm not sure where that trust model come from. That's probably my question. Where did the Unit Trust model come from, and why did, was the 75 percent of all of us taken out of this? That's what this amendment is asking. You could have put and made it two. You could have said, Do you um, want this as an exit? <laughs> Process and do you want this as a trust model? I thought that's what it was. Kapo he he o kuera na na me e rua. I'm going to hear me So if I'm going to tick one of those boxes, I'm agreeing to two things that I'm not sure that really. Well, unfortunately, that's how we've, that's how it's been delivered. So kuera taku. Where no? Yeah, kuera ngā o kupatai. Thanks, sir. Just starting off there with our. The, tr the, tr the trustees have, have to meet. You, you've given us the mandate when you elected us to go through the process as contained in the trustee to come up with that information. Now, if we all were having this discussion in a big room, we wouldn't get to any resolution. So we need your representatives. Everyone's been elected as representatives. You have two, two trustees per, per kahui to bring the voices of your kahui to the table. So it's not like no voices haven't been heard at this in this process. We need to make sure that we've been in an environment whereby we can have these frank discussions. And there have been quite some frank discussions amongst our trustees. You know? Not fist fight type discussions, real in-depth discussions about the differences we have between kahui. You know? The kahui all are at different stages of their life and development uh, in terms of progressing forward with how they want to see this settlement or parts of the settlement benefit them. It's not a homonymous, unique. We're all not in the, quite at the same starting block. Different groups are at different stages of their development. Now, for one, for the slowest person to hold us up, it's frustrating for some of those kahui who want to get on and get things done. So we've got this big spectrum of where kahui are sitting currently. And to have, we're needing a a process or model whereby if they want to get on and do things separately under their own steam without waiting for everyone else to come along on this journey, we need to help them with that option. And for another car, he's still back here at the starting block to say, Taiho, you can't go, you can't do anything. That's actually preventing them from further developing their aspirations of what they want to do. So that's all we're trying to push here. We're trying to have that decision making back with the members on the grassroots on the ground. So then they have an understanding of where they want to go and what they want to do and not create barriers to say, 
well, you can't do this because you've got to wait for everyone else. So that's what, but at the same time, we're trying to keep the financial connective, collective together because we know that works best, keeping the pūte together and growing the pūte. But in terms of the aspirations of the kawi, is making sure that they need to be matched first so they can achieve that. They can set their priorities, not have a, a collective set that for them. That's frustrating for some who want to do other programs that are not part of the collective. They want to do stuff that's specific to their needs on the ground. So we're trying to develop this kind of broad range of options to allow that to happen. But at the same time, be prudent financially. Be prudent around some of the decisions we collectively make with cultural redress, making sure that's state held together. So yeah, I know it may seem frustrating that you know, we've come to this collective settlement. Why have we uh, looking for car? We, why didn't I get that to vote on that? Um, we all know from the outset there has been a strong push by some car to wanting to get on and do things themselves. And we need to balance that up about with the collective. Now, you can still go on and do things with yourself, but you know, investing collectively, as seen in the presentation, keeping the money in together is the, the best option setting your priorities in terms of what you do with your annual income distribution is your kawi's responsibilities. What is it? What, where can we best get our money from and get the best outcomes from the use of that pūte? to come up with a, with a strategic plan for 25 years, bearing in mind that every five years there might be one less person at the table. Yeah, well, they're how, do you, based how do you forecast 25 years if you don't know who's still going to be around in three years or five years? So we've, we've, we've probably put time limits on those, so in the first three years you can indicate if a car we wanted to go independent, but you don't get that until two years later at the fifth year. And then at year 10 is another exit. So every 10 years we kind of know when this is, could potentially occur. We're setting specific times to say this could only occur because we know we can't have this happening every year because it's a state of flux. And that doesn't help our modelling and financial modelling, knowing that potentially we could be down one seventh because of a particular accident. If we can set these time frames, fix them in certain periods, then we can build that into the model better. And that's what the trust has decided to have. Fixed opportunities, nothing outside those. So why the unit trust? It was it was better collaboration. It was a collaboration. We had those two models, remember? Distrib um, the distribution model and uh, the devolution model and the consolidated model. It was the one in the middle of those. It was the collaborate collaborative model, basically. It's just unit trust because that's a legal term. It's not a it's not a casino based or financial pyramid scheme or anything like that. It's a it's a proper legal trust recognised in law. So I see it. Just explaining what the unit is. Oh. <laughs> Kia ora. De de mona, I hope. I live in Raumoto, uh, up the Awamati Road. I just want to congratulate you all and say a big thank you to Mr. Chairman, to you and your team for this report. Um, yeah, I, I found it quite at first, a bit frustrating, but putting it on screen, I actually benefit from it. I've understood what it's all about and where you, and you know, to do this in two years, to put a report like this in two years, it's amazing. And I'll say a big thank you um, to you all and um, wish the team, who's ever the new team who's going to be, wish them all the best. Um, but anyway, that's all. Just want to say a big thank you and going to help me sing my waiata. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you, Gunnell.